Rich Dad Poor Dad is said to be one of the best books ever written on personal finance. It features a story of a boy who had two fathers, his real poor father who had decrees on his name but struggled financially, and his rich father, the dad of his best friend, who stopped in the 8th grade but was financially well off. These two dads offered advice that influenced the life of the boy, Kiyosaki, but along very different lines. Welcome to Nurtured by Books, a community where young entrepreneurs find ideas from books that make businesses successful. If you are new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on insightful content like this. In this video, we are going to share with you 7 of the most important lessons from Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Number 1. Don't work for money, have money work for you. Working for money is earning income after putting in your energy and time directly. In other words, it's exchanging your time for money on a job. The problem with this strategy is that the day you don't work, you don't earn. And it is so hard to get rich working for money because there is a limit of energy and number of hours you can invest in a job. So there is a limit on how much money you can make. On the other hand, the rich build assets that make money for them even on the days they don't work. Warren Buffett could not have put it better when he said, If you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. Number 2. It's not how much money you make that matters, it's how much money you keep. Do you know a high salary earner who struggles with money? In my part of the world, they are the majority. Many people tend to think that if they earn more money, they will become richer. Some people decide to go back to school to get expensive degrees in order to be promoted in corporate companies. Others tend to get two extra jobs in order to increase how much they earn, but still they don't get any richer. According to Kiyosaki, more money cannot make you rich if the poor money management habits you have are the problem. How much you keep from whatever amount you earn will always make the difference. Number 3. Know the difference between an asset and a liability. According to Robert Kiyosaki, the poor are poor because they have no assets, and the middle class are so because they buy liabilities calling them assets. When you buy yourself a car, it is not wise to count it among your assets because you spend a lot of money on fuel and maintenance monthly. Even when you decide to sell it after a year, its value will have depreciated by a half. On the other hand, the rich get even richer because they buy assets as cash cows they milk for the rest of their lives. Buy yourself shares of stock from priming startups, acquire property in the form of real estate and you will struggle with money no more in your life. In simple terms, an asset is anything that puts money in your pocket and a liability is one that gets money out of your pocket. It cannot get any simpler than that. Number 4. Learn how to sell. A woman with a master's degree in English literature asked Kiyosaki how she could become a best-selling author. He told her to enroll in a sales training course and the woman was so shocked. She expected a better answer. Kiyosaki picked up a book on the coffee table and said, There is a reason successful books say best-selling author, not best-writing author. He told her that selling is a crucial skill if she wanted to be rich. Selling is by far the most important skill in business. Thomas Watson said, nothing happens until a sale is made. If you want to succeed in business and you don't know what skill to learn, learn how to sell. An entrepreneur spends the rest of his life selling his ideas to potential partners, persuading his suppliers to give him goods and pay after selling them, persuading possible investors to give him money to grow his business, persuading the government to grant him tax holidays. If you know how to sell, you have high odds of winning at business. Number 5. Your mind is the most important asset you have. In the words of the author, your mind is your greatest asset, so be careful what you put into it. 
He actually says that knowledge is the new money. What you know determines how much you earn. The truth is that money doesn't make you rich, knowledge does. Great opportunities are not seen with your eyes, they are seen with your mind. Teach your mind to learn things and embrace change. If you cling to old ideas, you will be left behind. If you are an entrepreneur and you want to develop your mind, subscribe to our channel to get new ideas from entrepreneurship books like this one for free. Number 6. Your wealth is proportional to your ability to take risks. The poor and middle class want to play it safe. What they know is to study hard, find a secure job and work hard. They can't quit their jobs to start a business because they are scared to get broke when their new business fails. They allow fear to hold them back. But the rich play it differently. They develop their financial IQ and take more calculated risks. They make millions rather than worrying about getting a raise. Number 7. Learn how to pay yourself first. The concept of paying yourself first got popular from George S. Clayson's The Richest Man in Babylon. It means keeping a percentage of whatever you earn and invest it in assets that are capable of paying you dividends in the future. However, when you are an employee, paying yourself first is impossible. You pay the government first by paying tax before your salary gets to your account. On the other hand, the rich who have corporations enjoy the luxury of paying tax after subtracting all company expenses. One can decide to register all one's assets as company assets, whose maintenance is a company's responsibility. As a reward for watching till this far, we have a bonus takeaway for you. Number 8. Your mindset makes all the difference. Don't say you can't afford something. Ask yourself, how can I afford it? One lets you off the hook and the other forces you to think. By automatically saying the words, I can't afford it, your brain stops working. By asking the question, how can I afford it, your brain is put to work. I can't afford it creates negative feelings like sadness and helplessness. When you change that into a question, however, it creates possibility and that allows positive feelings like excitement. Challenge yourself by asking this question instead of limiting yourself and saying you can't. You'll be better for it. You'll seek out and find solutions where you thought none existed before. Thank you so much for watching our videos. If you have found this one valuable, give it a thumbs up and share it with people you think it may help. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on interesting content like this. Turn on the notification bell to be the first to know when we upload a new video. Check on your screen, we have handpicked two more videos for you to enjoy next. See you in the next video.